Hello everyone, Argzy here. Welcome back to Elm Creek. We have uh, moved forward a day from when we were last here uh, on our live stream on the weekend and we now have two more crops ready to go. So the sorghum in here all ready to harvest. This is a uh, this is a great looking texture. I have to almost go out on a limb and say this is one of the best looking textures in the game now. Uh, even more so for especially when it is harvested and it doesn't cut the whole crop off doesn't cut it down low it leaves quite a bit of stalk on there which is uh kind of how sorghum's harvested as i understand they take the heads but don't take all the stalk down the bottom which is pretty cool and then over here we also have the potatoes which are all ready to harvest now we obviously need to take the tops off these uh there's a few weeds in amongst there too which is a bit of a shame but it's what it is and it is what we had to start with Elsewhere we've got the field over here, we got all the straw baled off it in the live stream along with the other one and we got that sold. So we do have this field that is going to need some work in it. However I was thinking about it, I don't really need to rush into tillage because apart from wheat, barley and kalon, I think it is, we can't actually plant anything for a wee while. And exactly as I thought, so we're in that position where we could get some wheat and barley planted, we could still plant some canola, uh, but... It's going to be a few months before we can plant anything else. So we're going to have to have a bit of a think about what we do. It will probably be good to get some crops in before the end of the year or before we go into winter. But uh, I'm not going to rush through and get those. I'd rather make a start on doing some more harvesting. So I'm going to make a start on the potatoes. I think that might be a good one for this episode. We're uh, going to have to lease some potato equipment. We're not going to go for one of the big self-propelled Harvesters, we are going to go and lease one of the tow behind ones, which might be a bit of a struggle for our tractor. So just taking a look here in the shop, we're obviously going to need to lease the topper to take the tops off, and then we have either the roper or the grimy harvesters there, both the same price, both the same width, both pretty much the same capacity, and both the same speed, and both 200 horsepower. So there's really no difference between those. I think I'll go with the grimy just because... Uh, it's a brand I am familiar with, with our uh, potato growing history in our family. So uh, probably we'll use that, but I don't think our tractor is powerful enough to pull it. No, we only have 175 horsepower, so I might have to lease a tractor as well, which will make it a bit interesting whether we're going to actually be able to afford or make any profit off this crop. So uh, we'll wait and see, but I'm going to head down to the shop, take the tractor down do we need to take the track down we probably don't actually because we'll run that on the trailer and uh, we'll go and get the other track from the shop so let's head down there and pick up our equipment so we can make a start on this so we've come down here to clever motors we just go over here and have a look in the shop and figure out what we're going to do now our potato technology two hundred and five thousand dollars i think if we uh, go and look to lease this i'm not going to bother changing anything we don't need to do anything yet have a look at our lease cost, 10 and a half grand. I'm not going to hit that just now because I was looking in secondhand technology or the used vehicle sales and we can actually pick up the Roper for only $50,000 there. So I'm almost tempted to buy that. Uh, I don't know what the resale value will be. I haven't actually bought any used equipment yet. Uh, this would be our first purchase, but I think we've got $585,000 sitting there. I'm not against potentially doing potatoes again in the future, so, so let's go ahead and buy that. I don't know if we do potatoes on quite this grander scale, but uh, I really can't turn down a deal. So there we go, we've got that bought. I was looking here at the Fent as well. We could have looked at setting this up at 246 horsepower, even the 228 horsepower version. Uh, we would have got a really good deal on that too. But I think we'll go just do another look and see what other options we might have in tractors. And we may consider leasing one at this stage. I'm not quite sure what our best setup is going to be for a higher horsepower tractor. Uh, I need to probably do a little bit more research into what other tools, uh, plows, cultivators, tillage equipment we might need. So I'm just having a look here in the medium tractors. Uh, we're going to have to be at the higher end of the horsepower scale. The JCB Fast Track, for example, 235 horsepower. Massey Ferguson 8S is uh, between that 220 to 300. 200 is a minimum, or 225 is a minimum. 
and the Deutz there 247. If we go too much further down, we're still just over those 200 horsepower range. Uh, but I'm actually thinking we might get the JCB. Not sure why? I'll just uh, just to give it a go. We're just trying out some different equipment. If I put some narrow tires on that, I'm not sure if that has an option. There we go. That would be a good setup for having in the field. So let's just have a quick look at our lease costs for that. That's 11 grand. So I think that would be a good option. We'll pick that up from there. And then our last piece of equipment we need is the topper. It's just here. And we might as well, seeing we've bought the potato harvester, we may as well buy that because no point not having it. We are going to consider doing more potatoes in the future. So we will uh, get these all hooked up and back down to the farm. All right, there we are all hooked up. Now, just as a little bit of a reference, we've just spent $71,000. Now, of course, $11,000 of that will be returned. Or, oh, sorry, $11,000 of that is leased equipment. So we've uh, invested $60,000 of our own. But it'll be interesting to keep a track of how much money we make off this potato field. And it might give us an idea if we are going to recover the costs on this equipment in the future, how much more we might need to spend on it. Now the one thing I haven't done is maintenance on the harvester. I'm just looking there and it is, it is getting down into the lower part of the bar. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We might be able to get away with not having to do it while we harvest this field. But uh, we're just about back here at the farm. We'll get down here, get set up and make a start. Alright, I did have the intention to think that we could have topped this while we were uh, while we were running around harvesting, but I think we might just race through and try and take these tops off. Here we go, we seem to be getting them off there. Hope that's doing a good job. Let's just have a little bit of a look there. Very difficult to tell. So we'll just uh, we'll carry on. We'll just do a couple of passes and then make sure we're not gonna have any issues with the harvesting. Let's go to show how many weeds there were scattered through this field though. Quite a few. Now we're going to be pretty tight for manoeuvring spaces on the end here. It's uh, quite enough as it is even just with this setup, not with the big potato harvester. So we'll just uh, we'll just have to see how that goes as well. There we go. I will just race through and get all these tops taken off and uh, then we'll get back and get hooked up to the harvester again. Get the trailer all sorted out on the case as well and uh, then we should be all good to make a start. I just thought I'd have a quick little check on the mini map there. On the map you can see that the remove foliage is disappearing where we've mown already and we have the yellow ready to harvest so it's like we are uh, doing the right thing. So. Like I said before, we'll just carry on and get the field all topped and ready to start harvesting. And there we go, this has not taken very long at all. In fact, it was incredibly fast. Shame about the weeds, and uh, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. It is just a shame that we don't have the Seasons mod weeds. Uh, certainly, in all of my experience, I've never seen a hay field get completely covered with weeds quite the way that uh, they make it happen in farming simulator so it would have been nice just to have patches of weeds or uh, something like that something more in tune with what was happening in that season in farming simulator 19 however that is not the case but what is the case is the tractor in the shed and we need to get that hooked up to the trailer we need to get the Harvester here hooked back up onto the JCB and make a start on these potatoes. So uh, we'll get this all sorted out and we'll be back in just a minute. Right, so we've uh, pulled the trailer out there. We've got the harvester here all hooked up. So I think if we just unfold that, it will offset the drawbar. It unfolds the large hopper there on the front. And we should now, just about ready to be able to pull up here on the edge of the field have a look around here I think if we turn things on come forward just a touch more lower that drum down there on the front and we are away potatoes going up the 
auger there. We are pretty close to the tractor, but I think we might be scraping it just a touch. But we've got there. Right. Well, we're not having any issues pulling this. It would be actually interesting to put the case on the front and see if it could handle pulling it, even though it is slightly below the power requirement. In fact, I might try that out when we're a little bit closer to having completed this field, just to see how it goes. But uh, for now, it's going pretty well. We're not filling up very quickly, however. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how many potatoes we do get off this field. But we'll pull through there, we'll back up a touch. Now, I think I might go and do this in a bit of a round pattern, just because of the space we have around the field to be able to operate. Try and get lined up in here as much of this field harvested as we can. Go. Most easier in this piece of equipment to drive in reverse like this, looking back at it. So, with that in mind, I think uh, this might be best played on a little bit of a time lapse, and we will just get into getting these potatoes harvested. Well, we've only got a couple more passes to go here and we'll be all finished with harvesting these potatoes. We haven't even managed to fill this up once yet, so we're not looking at a very lucrative crop. Our return on investment for the equipment is not going to be the best. But uh, not to worry, we've still got some decent amount of money there and we didn't have to pay to plant the crop or anything like that. So. There is that. Now just while we've been driving here, one thing I was going to comment on, I must admit I'm a little bit disappointed with the texture of the topped potatoes, if you want to describe it like that. Uh, it might be a little bit clouded by the fact there's weeds and things, however I would have expected to see more of a row type mound after topping. Uh, but it is very flat, considering the detail that's in some of the other crops and textures. Uh, it's very difficult to differentiate. Like I said, forget about the weeds, but it is very difficult to differentiate between what's been uh, what's been harvested and what hasn't. So hopefully there is some scope for improvement there, or something for them to work on a little bit, or for a modder to come out with some custom textures or something like those. Because I still feel that the potato textures in FS19 are uh, probably a little bit superior to this. Blank, we'll just get turned in here, and this should be pretty much our last run past. I do know, before we do go any further, I'll top out quickly. You can see the potato plants, well they are there. But, uh, like I said, they just don't seem 
be as obvious as I would have expected in a row crop. So. We'll just see if there's any improvements to that in the uh, in the future. But uh, like I said, we're not even going to get 10,000 litres. I haven't dared look at the price. I don't know whether we're in a good patch for the price at the moment or whether it's a little bit low or uh, what the deal is there. So we might have to take a quick little look at that. Once we get to the end here, we'll turn this off. We'll raise it up. Now I am just going to have a quick look here in the mini map, and as you can see, turn the harvested texture off. We have only missed two or three very little pieces up the top there, so can't even argue that we missed a whole lot and could go back and pick them up. Right, let's see how we can get this unloaded in here now. I believe. Okay, we'll go out just like we would if we were in a combine. Then we get that basket over the trailer without crashing into the tractor and hoping we're going to get them unloading. Here we go. That's uh, that's working pretty well. I did enjoy the heaped texture in the hopper there. It was quite nice. I see a little bit of uh, more of a heap than than what we used to. Alright, we are emptied. So, we'll back that up. Oh, I've put that down too quick and now we're all caught up on the trailer. Here we go. Alright, let's back this up over here. Let's park it in somewhere here. We can hold that back up now as well. And we'll just leave that sitting there for now. Of course the JCB is leased, so we will have to remember to return that. But let's go and jump in here and see what we're gonna do with these potatoes. Not even four hundred dollars per one thousand litres, so there's not even four grand. Uh, we are in September, so we do have potential to get a better price in January. So I think we might go and see if we can put this into the friendly silos down at the uh, train yard and store these for uh, selling later on if we can get a better price for them. I'm just going to pull one here into the elevator now. I'm actually going to try and tip out on the left hand side. So I do just want to stay over to the side there and uh, see what the animation is like on this trailer. There we go. It does raise the door and it then starts tipping the bed. That's, uh, that's quite nice. And then obviously the reverse going down. Alright. Oh, well, that's got those in storage. Uh, we'll probably forget about them now. Not that I'd be losing out too much if we did. Let's head back to the farm. With those potatoes finished, I figured we will probably have enough time to make a start here on the sorghum. So we'll uh, just head over to the other side of the field. Again, this field is tiny. It's not going to take us very long at all. I probably underestimated the size of these fields, or uh, we actually overestimated them. It might be the more appropriate uh, terminology there. Very nice to see. We talked about it before. How the uh, texture here is for the sorghum, leaving behind those stalks and uh, just taking off the heads. Really, almost stripping the. Uh, plant. That's very cool. So we're just going to uh, jump in here. We will get this done very fast by the looks of things. Pretty done the one length. Turn around and take a little bit of a headland pass off on this end and uh, work our way across the field. Not going to get much off it either by the looks of things. But, uh, I think we will be finished harvesting soon and have to start thinking about what our next tasks are for the farm. Probably looking at what we're going to do with these fields, planning our next crops, starting on some tillage and uh, possibly trying to decide if we can do anything with animals as well. So plenty of things to think about and uh, I want to try out some of the new features that uh, exist in Farming Simulator 22. Perhaps we even look at doing greenhouses, I'm not sure. But uh, we'll just see where this takes us.
But firstly, we'll get to all this sorghum harvested. Just over two and a half thousand litres of sorghum. So, like I said, hardly worth getting the combine or anything out for. So we'll just uh, go and get the trailer. We'll run this up to the local elevator. Our uh, free storage solution at the moment. And once we've done that, we'll probably be making some plans on what we're going to be doing uh, next time. Here we are, just getting this quickly tipped out here at the elevator. So that is all done. Alright, let's uh, make another trip back down to the farm. We've uh, got a fair amount of crop in there now, actually. Uh, we're just having to wait for the prices to come good. So we will be able to make a little bit of money. And by waiting till they are a little bit better, we'll hopefully make a little bit more than we would have if we'd sold them now. Another thing we have to remember, we do have this area of grassland here, which we need to do something with. We may uh, have to get a baler. I uh, get a mower, sorry, we already have the baler. Uh, and I think we can probably mow some of this grass in here on the left as well. We do have a little bit of land which goes across towards the uh, perimeter of the map. So we could uh, look at mowing some of that too and seeing what we can get from doing that. Alright, well there we are. I think we've just invested $50,000 into some equipment we may not use again. I really can't see potatoes being proper, profitable for us, particularly with the uh, smaller harvester there. And the only way it would be any good would be to have a decent amount of area and have the self-propelled harvesters to take care of it. Uh, as I was saying before, here is that sorghum texture. We'll just take a quick look at that with the head stripped off. So that is very nice. But it still has some length there. So I think our next tasks are going to be having a look at our fields and how we're going to prep them for our uh, next round of planting. Look at whether we merge some of them. And if we do do that, do we keep some space to put some uh, placeables, some greenhouses, or maybe some animals, or something like that down. So plenty of options there to think about. But uh, that will do it for me. I hope you have all enjoyed that episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.